Anyone wish to see the, the beautiful body can do so quickly. Please follow. Please follow time. Everybody will go one time. Yeah, 
Yeah. When one move, the next one will come. We're waiting on all right? Let me collect them. Oh, yes, I think that's it. Oh, Angie, look, it's Angie, no, she had to look, and now she has come out for them. Everyone saw the body? Okay, someone is coming. Yeah. That my virgin Uncle Junior could ever see and ever lose in his life when he's born. I love her, I care for her, and I go and give her the best beneficial in her life to see us when we reach her stage. Oh, so you can take over now. Um, ladies and gentlemen, today 
I have the distinct honor to give the committal, as you guys have just seen, to a very, very beautiful woman. And I want to say to you guys today that she wasn't just beautiful on the outside, but she was beautiful on the inside. Amen. You know, this morning, I asked the Lord what scripture to share before the committal. And this one scripture came to my heart, taken from Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, talking about King David. And it says here, for David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. And that corruption talks about the, the decaying of the natural. And I want to say today, like King David, Angie, as she was fondly known, serve her generation by the will of God. Amen. And when I say by the will of God, what is the will of God? To love God and to love people. In other words, our love for God must be measurable. It must be seen. And this is what Auntie did. She didn't just love God with mere words. But she loved God by the way she lived. She loved God by the things she said. And she loved God by the things she did. She really loved people. And it was evident. You know, it said she served, like David, she served God. And she served our church for many, many years, more than a decade, maybe even 15 years. I had the honor of serving her as a pastor. And she started off there being an usher. I don't know if you guys know that. And, it, you know, and David, even David in the Bible said that it's more important for him to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to be a thousand places elsewhere. And she took that position of being a doorkeeper. And let me tell you guys something. There are people that in our church today, because of the greeting that they got from Angie, you know, the, you know there's a saying that the first impression is the most lasting impression? Well, this was the first impression hundreds, if not thousands of people got. And they are there today because of that impression, because she loved them. She might have been rough. Some of you guys know that she would have been rough at times. But she was real. Let me say that. She might be rough, but she was real. Amen. Amen. Amen, people. Amen. And the reason she was rough is because she was a mother. She was a mother in Israel. She was a mother among the people in our church. And I'll tell you something. She served God with excellence. And she not only greeted people as an usher, but she was also part of the intercessory ministry. In other words, she was a woman of prayer. Angie prayed. And I tell you something, when Angie prayed for you, she kept coming and asking, how is it going? And if it wasn't going as good as it, she kept on praying. And she would pray until something happened. She would pray until heaven invaded in your situation and brought change. She was a woman of prayer. She knew how to bring heaven to the earth. And not only she was a person who greeted people and a person who prayed, but as you guys as you said, sir, she was a person who cared. And she would gather food stuff from the church. She would gather clothes from the church and find people in need to be a blessing to them. And I want to encourage you guys, even though Angie, which is in heaven now, I am sure that she has spoken words to every one of us. And I want to, I want to charge you, remember those words. Because it would have been words, not from Angie's heart alone, but it would have been words from the heart of the Father. And I want you to remember the things that she said, the things that she did, because these are the things that are going to keep Angie here on earth, even though she's in heaven. We might be missing her, but she'll always remain with us because of the things that she said and the things that she did. 
Amen. Amen. The first, the first answer of the passion of the body and soul is the first. Amen. So let's go ahead with the committal. You know, Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 to 18 says, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. But goes on to say in John 14 and 19, Because I live, because Jesus lived, you shall live also. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sung, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For the incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Angie is not here. She stands in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body that lies before us is but the earthly tabernacle, the house in which she lived among us for a time. It is tenderly and reverently that we commit this house to the grave. The body returns to the earth from which the body came. The spirit returns to God who gave it waiting for the day when we both, spirit and body, shall again be united in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, who which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for Jesus, for his precious gift of eternal life, and for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. In the midst of our natural sorrow, we thank you for supernatural grace. In the face of death, we thank you for the promise of life everlasting. And in the face of separation, we thank you for assurance of eternal reunion. We thank you for Angie's life here on this earth. And we recognize that the body before is not Angie, but the house, the tabernacle in which she lived. We acknowledge that Angie is with you now, rejoicing in your presence, enjoying the blessings of heaven. So, Father, we now commit the body of Angie to this earth, and we rejoice that her spirit is with you even now. We look forward to the day when we can all rejoice together, and we can thank you that we are not without hope, we are not without comfort. We thank you for making your presence very real to everyone, every family member, and especially strengthening and sustaining them in the days ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Did everyone say? Amen. 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 I shall over it. Hold on there, hold on, hold on, hold on.
Hold on, hold on. I just never wrapped it. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. It might look funny. I'm joking. It's not funny, I'm joking. All who knew my mother would know that my mother always sweeping. And always by the road sweeping. If anybody, everybody could attest to that. Look to this day. And I said to her, Ma, when you, when, when you die, I am going to put a broom in your grave. <laughs> She always told me that. You should know that. She always told me that. She always told me that. It's not no witchcraft. This is a lie. No, she always told me that. She always told me that. It's something that should be fine with you. Yeah. 
Okay, well then two of us are the boys. All right then. Make a hole for this one. Yes, I'm going to make a hole. You can walk with me. Come on, come down. Yes, darling. Tandy and the love with passion mm -hmm. and virtualness. Mm -hmm. You live a life to the Lord and live a life to the key. I love you. I talk to me, I talk. If I talk, I'll be a prime minister today. 